Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works, and today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us recall the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. We hold up our palms for their blessing. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory, who is the King of glory. He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied, he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore up my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you forsaken me? How many, how many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, God my, my God, God why, why have, have you forsaken me? me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, 
Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high, and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, It must not be during the festivities, or there will be disturbance among the people. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, why this waste of ointment? Ointments like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor and they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money, and he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go? and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room, in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve, and while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you who is eating with me. They were distressed and asked him one after the other, Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the Scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. 
After psalms had been sung, they left to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to him, I tell you solemnly this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, but let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake one hour? You should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping, their eyes were so heavy, and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent them, sent by the chief priests and the scribes and elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal for, with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. <coughs> the others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke, Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the high priest's palace and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several, indeed, brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. We heard him say, I am going to destroy the temple made by human hands, and in three days build another not made by human hands. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. And the high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. 
he deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and blindfolding him and began hitting him with their fists and shouting, play the prophet, and the attendants rained blows on him. And while Peter was down in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servants' girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there and stared at him and said, you two were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know, I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went into the forecourt, and the servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, this fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, you are one of them for sure, why, you are a Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment the cock crew for the second time, and Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times, and he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again, Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was there in the prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. And when the crowd went up and again to, be, to ask Pilate the customary favor, Pilate answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should release Barabbas for them. Then Pilate spoke again, but in that case, what am I to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, and twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They then led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him, the inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself, come down from the cross. The chief priests and scribes mocked him again among themselves in the same way. They said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. 
even those who were crucified with him taunted him. And when the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those stood by heard this, they said, listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him and to drink, saying, wait and see if Elijah will come and take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, in truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph, and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion, and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and took note of where he was laid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> it's recommended by the Church that the homily on Palm Sunday should not be a very long one, so as to allow the words we have just heard, the accounts of the Passion of the Lord, speak for themselves. And so I offer this morning just a few thoughts on the Holy Week we have just began, just begun. It begins this morning in our churches with the Palm Sunday procession, or to give it a proper title, the commemoration of the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem. And one of the many joys of Holy Week is simply knowing that what we do in our churches at home is being done by faithful Christians all over the world. Millions of people will today be taking part in what, what is not just a reenactment of that first Palm Sunday, but a living sign of our desire to draw closer to Christ the King and to walk with him in his suffering, in his death, and in his resurrection. Today's Palm Sunday procession is only the first of many others that will take place in our churches during the next few days the procession of the Blessed Sacrament on Maundy Thursday night, accompanying Jesus as he makes his way to, from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he asks us to watch and pray. The procession on the, of the cross on Good Friday, venerating our Saviour as he hangs for us on the wood of the cross. The procession of the Paschal Candle on Holy Saturday night, as the darkness of sin and death is scattered by the light and joy of the risen Christ. The church this week calls us to be not just observers and bystanders whilst all these things are going on, 
The church calls us to participate in them with devotion and prayer, to let the words and the liturgies help us enter as far as we can into the mystery and into the truths of the great events which have brought us salvation. Above all, we are asked to faithfully walk with Christ himself, who will be present with us as he has promised in word and in sacrament. For what we celebrate this week is not simply events which happened in history 2,000 years ago. What we celebrate is the new life Christ has won for us and continues to give to us and to the world. In the words of the Easter proclamation, we'll hear at the great vigil on Saturday night, what good would life have been to us had Christ not come as our Redeemer? And so may God bless us all and millions of the faithful throughout the world as we all begin this holy week. May we know the presence of the living Lord in the worship and prayer we will offer so that dying with him, we may truly rise with him at Easter. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. The pilgrim church journeys in humility like her king. He leads us along the way of the cross towards the resurrection. May he give us the courage to take up our cross every day and follow him. Lord, in your mercy, for the shrine and for all who work and minister here, for our Christian brothers and sisters throughout the world at the beginning of this holy week, especially those in the Holy Land of our Lord, for those who suffer conflicts and warfare in that holy place, that we may all grow in love and unity with Christ. Lord, in your mercy for all who make laws and administer them, for all who govern us, for the peace of Jerusalem, and for all who work to promote harmony and justice in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For all who are weighed down by hardship, failure, or sorrow, for those who are sick in hospital or at home, for His Majesty the King and Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, for their family, and for all known to us in need. May the Lord raise them up by the merits of his passion and grant them healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have died, especially the recently departed, for those remembered today in the Shrine's Chantry Book, for the repose of the souls of William Stewart, Aidan Portnell, and Regina Ellen Adams the repose of the soul of Brian Parry, priest, 
and Tim Slater, members of the Order of Our Lady of Walsingham. With faith in Christ's victory over sin and death, we commend them and all our own loved ones departed to his love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask for the prayers of the saints in heaven, and especially those of Our Lady of Walsingham, consoler of the afflicted, greeting her as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. In silent prayer, let us offer our own intentions and ask for God's strength, that in this holy week we may never be separated from him. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do what they do not have the confidence to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God, With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Pope Francis, Norman our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. 
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father, with the Holy Spirit, thou death gave life to the world. Free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Has passed our lips as we will, and may we receive in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow down for the blessing. 
Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you for ever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.